This is 4.4, which is the compound angle formulas. Now, I don't have a video on 4.3, unfortunately, and that's because this is the first time that I've taught the course, and we kind of skipped over 4.3 for some reason. So, you know what, in the future, I'll try to make a video for 4.3, but as of right now, I don't have a lesson for it. Okay, so 4.4, we actually learn about like 8 to 10 new trig identities. I know, isn't that crazy? 8 to 10, that's so many. So if you're one of the schools that has to memorize those, holy cow, feel bad for you. Okay, but that's okay, I'm in there. What we're going to do in this video is just talk about those new identities, and then in a separate video, I'll do loads of examples. All right, so the warm-up. Number one, I want the formula for the distance between two points. This distance formula is grade 10 stuff from analytic geometry. You're not going to need to know this for trig, okay? But uh, what you do need to know is that this is actually just Pythagorean theorem. You have your a squared plus b squared equals to c squared, which means we would have to square root our entire answer to get c by itself. Pythagorean theorem seems to kind of show up here and there, so it will be showing up a little bit later in some of the examples. Now, state the Pythagorean and the quotient identities. That's something we learned about in grade 11. They look like this. Okay, so the Pythagorean identity is sine squared plus cos squared equals to 1. You can manipulate this a little bit, like you can take the sine or the cos and bring it to the other side. And it really depends on what you're trying to prove um, in terms of your identities. One might be a little bit more useful than the other. This is a quotient identity, and that's where you have tan is equal to sine over cos. Whenever you do your identities, you always kind of want to change your tans back into the other fundamental uh, trig ratios like sines and cos. It might help you out in terms of your proving. Now this last question I might address a little bit later um, in the video. I just want to show you, this is from 4.2, my last video, where we have to find the exact value. So that is where um, I just want to show you that even though the question looks different, they actually equal to the same thing. And that's because these are two perspectives from the same triangle. So if you don't get that, I'll show it to you a little bit later. But first, I want to go over identities. A trig identity is where you have some sort of equation, and no matter what x is equal to, your left side will always equal to your right side. Now that seems kind of logical, but there are some examples where when you put in an x value, the left side might not equal to the right side, and that's where you don't have an identity. So make sure that all of the values for x work so that the left side equals to the right side. This quotient identity is going to be proven right now uh, graphically. Okay, so what I have in the graph is I have the left side, the tan x function, and now I'm just going to draw the sine x and the cos x functions as well. So why don't we just take an x value and we'll just see if it works. So here's an x value of 180. It looks like the left side, the red, so tan is equal to 0 at 180 degrees. The green looks like it's 0 and the blue looks like it is at negative 1. So if I take 0 divided by negative 1, I get the red graph, which is 0. Okay, so it works. We could always choose other points along this graph, and it will actually always work, Okay, which makes this a trig identity. There are a bunch of identities that we know from before. So we know about the quotient identity. We already know about the Pythagorean identity and how to manipulate it. Okay, We also know any of the reciprocal identities. So anytime we see cosecants, secants, or cotangents within a proof, we can always change it to those other um, primary trig ratios. Okay, so like I said, I was going to go over that last question in the warm-up again to show you about the two perspectives of a triangle. Okay, so this is called the co-function identities, and they are right here. All right, so what I mean by that is if you have a triangle and let's say you have this is a certain degrees, this angle and this angle should add up to 90 degrees because the two 90 degrees, sorry, the two angles that add up to 90 degrees should then add up to this 90 degrees to make 180. So what I've done is I've just written this as theta and this will be 90 degrees or pi over 2 minus theta. All right. 
What I also have here is I'm just going to put my eyeball here to show you that my perspective is from this corner. Then that means this is going to be my opposite. This side will be my adjacent and that side will be my hypotenuse. And I've just labeled the sides A, B, and C. If I look from a different perspective, some things change. So the A, B, and C are still there, but now this side is my opposite. This side is my adjacent and the hypotenuse has not changed. Okay, so depending on my perspective, the opposite and adjacent might be interchanged. The hypotenuse doesn't change though. What that shows you are these co-function identities. So for example, sine theta. So theta was our red eye. Okay, sine would be your opposite. So here's the red opposite over the red hypotenuse. That's A over C. So I got that in red right here. And that is equivalent to cos from the other perspective, the blue eye. So you have your cos, which is your adjacent, here's the blue adjacent, over the hypotenuse. That's still A over C, and that's why I put it in blue. So this and this are exactly the same. Even if we did this one, you'll see that they're exactly the same as well. So although I'm looking for my red eye or my blue eye, I could get the same answer either way. And that's how these co-function identities work. Now, these are all the other identities I was talking about. Crazy, huh? You have your compound angle formulas. Okay, so there are your addition and subtraction cos formulas. Here are your addition, subtraction, sine formulas, and then your addition, subtraction, tan formulas. All right, again, if you have to memorize this from like your school, I feel bad for you, but I've been there. It's not so bad. Okay, so these are some things that you're going to have to keep in mind. Um, and why don't we try some examples? Okay, so this is technically kind of like an example. These are our last two identities, and those are our double angle formulas. Okay, so this is sine of a double angle. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to prove this one over here, and I'll show you very quickly the proof of the other one. Okay, so if I have sine of 2x, We'll just say that that's the left side of our identity. Um, isn't that the same as one of the compound angle formulas? So that is the addition formula for sine, which is this guy right here. So the addition formula for sine works like this, where you have sine of the first angle right here times cos of the second angle plus cos of the first angle times sine of the second angle. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've divvied this 2x up into 2x's added together. And instead of wherever you see a y, which is here and here, I'm actually going to put this red x instead. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. I have sine x cos y, so sine x and cos red x, plus cos x sine y. So cos x is right here and the sine of the red x is right there. It really doesn't matter which order they're in because they're multiplying, but I wanted to show you that, well, isn't this and this exactly the same? So don't I have like two of those? Okay, and that's where this formula comes in. And the other one, okay, so sorry, right side is equal to two sine x cos x and we have to make it a legit proof by saying therefore left side equals to right side. Now what I want to show you is um, the very bottom of that which is the cos 2x proof. Okay so here's cos 2x and I use the cos addition um, identity in order to prove the exact same thing. Okay so instead of the y's I replace them with an x because the 2x I divided up into the 2x's added together. And here we have cos x times cos x, which is cos x squared, um, or in other words, cos squared x. Okay, and then sine x times sine x is sine squared x, and that equals to this side of the identity. Okay, so that was a bunch of identities, and you know what? I'm going to put them all in one place so that you can freeze it and write them down if you have to. Okay, so there are a bunch of identities here, and we will be using them in uh, the next video. Okay, so the next video, again, are, is just going to be on many, many different examples. Okay, so good luck with memorizing all these. feel bad for you.